What's going on YouTube? It's your boy JL Musi here. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down the process of creating stitching on a boot in mine. Now at first hand, this might seem like a daunting task, creating a repeatable pattern over a complex shape like a boot, but it's actually not. I came up with a simple workflow that involves extracting curves from your topology and then using a mesh network and its distribute node to create a uh, repeatable pattern that's easy to edit and lastly using a curve warp deformer to place that pattern and wrap it around our boot. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. I'm going to take my mesh and duplicate it. Then uh, I'll be using the multi-cut tool and a combination of the insert edge loop tool to basically slice through my model. So essentially I'm creating a edge path where the stitching is going to go through, right? Um, from these edges, we'll go ahead and extract curves and those curves will create the backbone for our stitching. So here I'm just using the multi-cut tool and connecting uh, the edge loops that I placed. Here you'll see me uh, create this try, and what that's basically doing is creating a stopper, right? So that's gonna stop my uh, edge loop from going all the way through. So I skipped ahead in the video and I already have all my edges laid out where my stitching is going to go through. So I'm just double clicking and uh, selecting edge loops and then holding down control, I'm deselecting uh, the excess edges. Uh, from these edges, we'll go ahead and pull the curves out. So um, you'll see me switch into wireframe mode here and uh, that's going to help me to see pretty much the selection a little bit more clear. So I'm gonna to go to modify and I'm gonna to go to convert. And the option I'm gonna do is polygon edges to curve. I'll go to the options and I'll show you what the default settings look like if I reset them. And that's not what we really want. So a nifty little trick to actually redo any menu command quickly without going all the way through the menu is middle mouse click on that menu, right? And that will pull up the last thing that you did. So from here, we're gonna switch it to linear, hit convert, and now we get a more predictable result, right? It's actually exactly like our edges that we selected. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the ultimate subdivision level of your object, right? Uh, for me, once I hit three mode, uh, you see that my curve no longer follows my object. So I'm gonna need to smooth out my curve because this boot is actually built to be smooth. So uh, I'm gonna go to the modify curves here and then I'm gonna go to the rebuild option. And uh, you see that by default, I have the degree set to seven. I'll need to switch that to two. I'll hit rebuild and now we get a much smoother curve. But the next issue is that our corners are very, very round. So in order to fix this, what I'll need to do is undo this and add points between this. And these extra points in the corners are gonna help us reinforce those corners. So I need to go to control points and select all the control points that are pretty much make up the corner of this curve. So I'll drag select these guys and then add these guys as well to the selection. I'm gonna to go to curves and I'm gonna to go to insert knot and the options. Uh, so what I wanna do is add one knot between the selections. I'll hit insert. If I go back to edit points, you see that I have extra points in there. So from here, I'll go back and redo my rebuild curves. 
And you see that those corners hold up a lot better. So now we got a smooth curve and we still got uh, very good sharp corners. So I started with a subdivided rectangle and I applied a bend deformer. Then I aligned the handle to the proper orientation and set the curvature to where I wanted. From here, I took the edges and beveled them, and I actually decided to lay out my UVs um, ahead of uh, creating the pattern. Uh, if you're using MASH, this step really doesn't matter, but if you're using the alternative option to MASH, which I'm going to show you, um, I highly recommend UVing uh, your stitching or really whatever you're going to be duplicating many times before you create a pattern out of it. So my UVing uh, workflow is very, very simple. I basically just take my uh, object that I want to UV, apply a quick planar map on it, then I select the edges, and then I cut them. After cutting them, I just run the unfold tool, and there is my UV layout. So we're going to be creating our stitching pattern without the help of MASH. MASH was rolled out in Maya 2016 extension 2. So if you have a version of Maya prior to that, you won't be able to create it using MASH. And I didn't want you guys to be left behind if you are using an older version. So it's a very similar technique. It does uh, have a little bit less flexibility than using MASH. So we're going to start out with one stitch here. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate it and then move it over. The point of moving it over is just to basically see how much we have to offset it and in which direction. So 0.9 looks good. We have a nice gap between uh, the two uh, stitches. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to select my stitch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, duplicate special, and I'll go to the options. And what I'll do from here is um, I'll put the uh, 0 0.9, or sorry, 0 0.09 in the Z. And then I'll zero out the X here. And I'll bump this uh, number of copies up to about 85. I'll hit duplicate special. And there we go. There we have our pattern. And then from here, I'll just select uh, all my stitches and hit combine to have one solid mesh. So I'm going to jump over to my modeling standard workspace. That way I have access to my mesh network tab. And I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, stitching here and on the top left create a mesh network. With this mesh network uh, we have a couple nodes but the one that controls the uh, spacing of this uh, and the transforms of it is the mash distribute node, right? So I'm going to go over there on the properties and you see that I uh, zeroed out the X and I put a value on the Z, right? So I want to play with this in the Z and I also want to increase the number of points. Um, I basically have one stitch for every point in this uh, network. So once I get the number of points and the distance um, almost to where I want it and to what uh, it matches my previous patterns, uh, I'm going to go ahead and shift click the curve. And I'm going to go to the deform and then the curve warp. And you see that uh, now my network is being wrapped around this curve that we built. Now, one thing about using uh, the MASH network is uh, it creates some normal issues. To fix that, it's real simple. 
We're just going to jump over to our mesh display and we're going to go ahead and go to unlock normals. And now we see that we actually get um, our uh, object display looking properly. Uh, the other thing I'll do is soften the edges to soften up the look of the stitching. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing that we could do is rotate the uh, stitching a bit and we have two options for this. One, uh, we could do this on the actual um, curve warp deformer itself. And the other is just going to the master's tribute node. Uh, either of these will work. You also have this envelope option, which uh, basically controls uh, the activation of the deformer. So one is active and then zero is not, and then anything in between will be basically a blend. So I'm going over here to curve rotation and I'm playing with the uh, rotation value. And now we see that uh, this is actually rotating towards the boot uh, a little bit nicer uh, and it's giving us a better ultimate look. Now I'm just going to the uh, distribute node and I'm rotating it on the Z and then you see that we get the same exact effect. So it's up to you whether you want to uh, control some things on the deformer level or use the mass distribute node. Now if I wanted a little bit more uh, space between the stitches, I could just uh, go back to my mass distribute and increase the distance. And you see that now we're getting a little bit more spacing between our stitches. So what I'm doing here is uh, grabbing my geometry and throwing it into another layer. And from there, I'm going to set the uh, layer to a reference by hitting the R. Now you see that my boot is no longer selectable. Um, and this is actually going to be very beneficial because I no longer need to grab the boot. Uh, but I do need it to be there visually as reference. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if we look closely at this corner here, um, we see that uh, our curve is actually coming out of the shape a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab the control points of this curve. And then I'm just going to push them out very, very slightly. And as long as we have our history active on this network, we'll be able to tweak the curve and still tweak our stitching pattern. So I'm just gonna grab the other control point here and push it out slightly. And there we go. So that looks a little bit better. I'm just gonna jump into my checkerboard pattern here and just kind of show you what the UV layout looks like. And uh, you see that I have the UVs laid out for the boot, the laces, and also the stitching. And that's something I like to think about, especially when creating repeatable patterns, is uh, I rather lay out the UVs earlier uh, if I know it's gonna be overlapping UVs. And that technically saves me a lot of work uh, laying out individual UVs or copying and pasting UVs over and over. And that's pretty much it. We have gone through the whole workflow of creating polygonal edges where we want the uh, stitching to go through, then taking those edges and extracting curves. Then we took those curves and we smoothed them while retaining sharper corners. Then uh, we created one stitch and with the help of MASH and its distribute node, we were able to create a pattern. From that pattern, we use the curve warp and we wrap our stitch pattern around the areas that we need to go to. So this wraps up our video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you could really see the value of this workflow, not only for creating stitching, but really any repeatable pattern that needs to be wrapped around the surface. So don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.